welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show... I'm going to drink coffee. No, you're not going to drink coffee. We figure that you know a lot of people are going to be buying a new machine because they love Windows Vista. Mm -hmm. But some people are going to say, no, Vista, I don't, I don't want a new operating system. They're going to want to upgrade their existing machine. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to do performance upgrades for your computer. What you should consider, what you shouldn't consider, the details of each of those things. Absolutely. Are you excited? I'm excited, but I've been drinking coffee. <laughs> okay, let's uh, have a look at a message from one of our sponsors, because they pay the bills. You're excited too. <laughs> I am. And we'll be back with performance upgrades for your computer. Cut. <laughs> This is Biff and Boo. They are Andy's cats. This is Andy's pillow. It is freshly laundered. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It's the best screencasting software ever. Now answer our trivia question. What screencasting software does not smell like cat pee or hide when it's bad? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. All right, so I have an old computer, an older computer, and I want to make it run faster. Yes, that's a very noble game, uh, goal there. A noble aim. Aim, goal, game. Game, goal. Game. Yes, it is. Yes. And uh, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. What well, requires a low-level geek degree to do that. But that's why you're here to watch us, is so mm -hmm. you can get better educated edu 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 on your computer. Mm -hmm. I get questions all the time, actually, about uh, upgrading their machine. Uh, the things that they want to upgrade, well, I want to upgrade the CPU, and I want to upgrade the motherboard, and I want to upgrade the memory, and I want to upgrade the video card. And some of these things you can upgrade very easily. Some of these things so you don't want to so touch. Yes. All right. So this is sort of slightly in response to viewer mail, mm -hmm. and slightly because we want people to stop asking us the questions all the time. We're just going to point them to this episode. Yeah. Please quit bothering us. <laughs> Please. No. No, All it's right. not that. It's, it's, it's a good, I mean, it's, it's a very common question. It's a very common get, question, so. Yeah. so let's uh, start with the number one upgrade you can add to your computer to make it run better. With no pain. With no pain. Typically. Typically. And that's RAM. Now, people, people ask, should I upgrade my CPU? Should I upgrade my CPU? And we say, no. Do the RAM instead first, because often the performance benefit you think you're going to get from upgrading the CPU, you can get from just upgrading your RAM. Now, a little while ago, you actually did a testing against Windows XP. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think it was, was it for an episode that I did on Call for Help, or? That was something remember. back in Way the back sense in the of time. Anyway, so, did some testing, mm -hmm. and you discovered that a RAM upgrade can improve your Windows XP performance mm -hmm. by, I don't know, it was some massive amount, wasn't it? It was pretty insane. So if you went from, I think it was from 128 or, one, or 256 megs to half a gig, mm -hmm. That you got an instant boost in performance on Windows XP. On Windows okay. Vista now, I mean, they're talking about a minimum of 512 megabytes mm -hmm. uh, and upgrading to a gigabyte of memory as a minimum. So we'd recommend that depending on which machine you have. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, I just say put a gig of, of RAM in your machine, and if you mm -hmm. want a performance boost, put two. Mm -hmm. So, how do we do that? Well, uh, first you have to make sure that your system can actually have uh, a RAM upgrade. So, um, Get ready with the screwdriver and crack the case. It's, it's not really all that hard. You're not going to break anything just by cracking the case. You're going to break things when you start poking things inside there. But just slide the uh, side panel off, slide the, the case around the back off. And uh, you can, first of all, find out how much RAM you have without even doing that by going to uh, your, uh, your computer uh, here, uh, right clicking on the My Computer and choosing Properties. And on Vista, it's just the computer, choose properties. On XP, just go to my computer and do this. And it should tell you how much memory is in your system right here. There you go. And right if there. you're on XP, it'll be a slightly different screen, but it will tell you how much RAM is in your system. So now you know. Right. Um, so do you need more than that? Probably, mm. in most cases. I would so. say, you know, as I said before, a gig is probably a standard uh, configuration you want on, on either a Mac or a PC. Mm -hmm. And two gigs, you know, ideally if you're going to do video editing, not, actually not video editing, but photo editing and more performance oriented tasks. Mm -hmm. So, my favorite website to, to check out, to find out, you know, what RAM upgrades I need for my specific mm -hmm. system is something called Crucial.com. Mm -hmm. I've got it up here on the screen right here. 
Crucial.com has this, these really great little online utilities that allow you to scan your system and it'll actually figure out what system you have, tell you how many slots you have, how much memory is in those slots, and what upgrades will fit your machine right now. And there's lots of lots to choose from, but this makes it very, very simple. Mm -hmm. So if you click on the scan my system uh, icon here, you can actually pull down a little applet that'll allow you to Ooh, diagnose that. Ooh, this is much better than it used to be. Yeah. So I'm gonna click that, scan my system. There we go. It'll scan. Um, and let's see. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, it requires Internet Explorer. Okay. Well, mwah, mwah. Let's uh, let's try that again with Internet Explorer. While you're uh, waiting for uh, this uh, uh, thing to happen, why don't you crack open your case uh, physically and take a look at how many uh, slots uh, you have free? It's that simple too. <laughs> no. So you just click on Scan My System. Right there you go. And uh, we'll take you to the system scanner. Looks like you select the box to agree to their terms and conditions, which say they get your firstborn, and all that other good stuff. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Download, click on Run, and the crucial scan.exe will come down from the website uh, and uh, start to deploy. You want to click, you know, obviously with Internet Explorer, the security uh, things will kick in. You don't want to get spyware, and so that's what's trying to prevent. You do want this downloadable applet, so you just keep saying, yeah, 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 give it to me. You just say that if you're uncomfortable with running this on your system, you could always crack open the case. Really. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> yeah, you could. You Honestly, you could. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. But So if, you, if you're going to go down that path, though, Sean, yeah. what key things do you need to do to stay safe? To stay safe, uh, like I said before, don't go poking around inside there. Um, you can see the uh, slots of RAM uh, uh, alongside the, the thin sticks, and usually right beside the processor, you've got several slots in there. So between two and four, usually, with most systems. Some of them will only have one, so that's one thing that's good to, to crack open the case for, just to see. Um, but yeah, just go look to see, do you have any slots free in there? Are they all filled? If they're all filled, then you have to do a complete replay so of all of the, uh, the sticks in there if you want to upgrade. So, so if you have like a 512 and 512, you've got to pull one of those out, free up a slot so you can put another gig stick in there if you want to go to one, yeah, one and a half. if you've gigs. only got the two slots in there, right. for sure. Or if you want to put two gigs in two slots, you've got yeah. to pull and dump those 512 megs of uh, RAM and actually maybe sell them on eBay to get some money back. And sure. And actually, I would so. actually suggest, uh, in, in a lot of cases, it does uh, it does make sense to buy them in pairs because um, a lot of new systems use dual channel memory. So if you put them in in pairs, you actually get better performance than just putting one stick in. Right, right. OK, so my, my scan's actually finished here. And it's mm -hmm. basically, it's telling me that uh, that I have no empty slots, that I've got two sticks uh, of 512 megabytes in this machine right now. Uh, but potentially, I could put two one gig sticks in this system. And then and right away, it actually says, you know, here's the, here's the memory that you want, here's the performance increase that you've got, and I can add it to the shopping cart and actually buy it online right now. And I've done this I a few times. I knew this before. was a trick. No, no, it is. I mean, obviously, it's an upsell, but it's actually a very good tool. Uh, it makes buying RAM very, very easy. And I've done, a, I think, probably much all the RAM upgrades I've done done through uh, Crucial.com, so I really like that. This is a very handy tool. I remember in the old days when it, uh, you would tell it what your system was, and it would tell you what you could fit in there, but then it was up to you to figure out how much you already had in there. Mm -hmm. Right, so things have vastly improved there. Now, it won't recognize all machines, and, uh, and I, on a Mac, I don't know if it'll work or not. Probably won't. I Maybe don't know. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, so that's RAM. And if you go from, so it's worth going from 1 to 2, or, or up to 2, between 2 and 4, would you, would you recommend that, Sean? Depends what you're going to be doing. Yeah. If you need to hold things in memory that are really big, like huge Photoshop files, then for sure I think going up to four will help you a lot. Mm -hmm. For most standard users, I don't think it makes much, much difference. difference. That's right. It's not going to improve boot times or anything like that. Windows is, uses the memory that's there anyway, uh, once you have two gigs anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so next upgrade. I guess I suppose the next most logical upgrade to do would be what? Would it be a hard drive upgrade, or would it be a what would you recommend? Okay, a well, video card, probably. Well, let's let's squash the other one first of all, the processor. Because yes. we mentioned that right, right off the top. Fair so enough. can I upgrade my processor? If you are really comfortable tearing this apart uh, and uh, doing that, sure. Um, if you already know that you're comfortable doing that, you probably don't need this episode to tell you what these are, things are going to be. If you're not really comfortable going in there, tearing things apart inside your system, mm -hmm. upgrading your processor, don't do it. It's Can't not really worthwhile. You'll now, get, now, why not? Um, the Upgrade Cascade is one really good reason, because when you switch your processor, you're probably going from a, a Pentium 4 to a Core 2, which means you got to change the motherboard, which means you got to change the RAM, which means you also have to change your power supply now, which means you may also have to change your video card. So 
in a lot of cases, it's just not worth it. So, and, and when you're going in that one line, so you're going Pentium 4 this level to the next level, the performance difference that you're going to get out of that upgrade is fairly minimal. It's not necessarily... And the headaches that you're going to get in, in return for that is just not worth it. It's going to be a headache. So unless you really, really need to squeeze that extra little thing and you've already done all of the upgrades that you can do in the system that uh, we're also going to suggest, and you really need to do it, then maybe consider it. But um, most of the time these days, I don't recommend, un unless you're at, right at the low end of the processor thing, and you can upgrade it to the high end. Right. right. So, but I, I don't typically recommend upgrading the processor okay. at all. So no CPU upgrades, generally. Not, at least not worth it, worth it. But I do want to talk about uh, your GPU, your graphics processor. Yes. Especially in light of uh, Windows Vista coming on the scene now, uh, it has a new interface called Aero, which is all pretty. You know, see through you know windows stuff like that, and it's if you're going to go from an old machine and put Vista on it, you're de definitely going to need a graphics processor upgrade. Mm -hmm. And we should be we should note that uh, the the one that we just talked about the uh, the RAM upgrade before that that'll work on the uh, on the notebook side of the equation as well oh. as the desktop. Right. But now we're sort of venturing into territory that uh, you're not going to change the graphics component in your notebook. On a notebook at all, no. no. On a desktop, you're going to want to do that. On a desktop, that. you can. So the minimum specifications for upgrading your, your GPU uh, on, a, uh, on a computer, on a desktop computer, is, and to run Vista is a minimum of 128 megabytes of video RAM. You'll see that specification on the box. Uh, however, that's the minimum. So you're really going to be, you know, if you want performance out of Vista, you're going to want to go to 256 megabytes of video RAM on an ATI or an NVIDIA or other branded card. Uh, and ideally, especially moving forward into the future and, and uh, fighting obsolescence, you know, you're going to want half a gig of video RAM. Now, these days, those cards with 512 megs of video RAM are going to be relatively expensive, several hundreds of dollars maybe even, you know, I think four or five, six hundred dollars. Um, they can cost you more than the CPU. They can actually so. cost you more than the entirety of the rest of your system if you go high if enough. If you go really high end, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so you know, think in terms of a 256 megabyte or a 512 megabyte of video RAM. Moving forward, um, well, actually, right now, and maybe you know, in the future, we'll get a, a gigabyte ton video RAM capability mm -hmm. uh, in the future. Now, the video card upgrade is actually going to be most uh, noticeable for people that actually have an integrated graphics unit right on the motherboard right now. So explain what that is. So uh, with an integrated versus discrete, we're, we're talking about adding a new card in, which would be a discrete graphics card. A separate card. And that'll go into one of the slots on your motherboard. But uh, a lot of computers, just to save money from the manufacturing end, they'll put the graphics component right on the motherboard so it's hidden in a chip. You know, hidden among the other chips that are in there. So what that does is it makes it very easy to manufacture, a lot cheaper, more efficient. Unfortunately, what it also means is you don't get a whole lot of graphics processing power. All right. So, and the big problem is that, the, that an integrated graphics processor on the motherboard will use main system RAM. Mm -hmm. So it'll actually, you know, kind of uh, steal memory from the system overall. Right. So even if it does have uh, the ability to run Aero, which uh, some of the newer integrated things do, it's still going to take away from other parts of your system. Right. So you're going to want to think about a separate card. Now those go into what kind of slots? Uh, the, the separate discrete video video cards. The new discrete video cards are typically going to be going into your system right now in a PCI Express slot. But if you have an old system, you may still have an AGP slot, and you can still get uh, AGP cards that will. Uh, they're fairly inexpensively uh, that will go into those slots and give you a performance boost if you're using a if you're using an integrated card right now. That's right. So, so that's an important question to ask. Yeah, find out uh, from your system manufacturer's website or from the motherboard manufacturer's website what slot it is that you have for graphics uh, upgrades. And in some cases, if your system is was a cheapo system when you got it initially as a budget uh, sort of system, it may not even have upgrade capabilities in this. So that be very careful. I bought a, a Dell 2.8 gigahertz machine. And uh, there was no discrete graphics slot. Right, so don't go buying that card before you know that you have the slot for it. Uh, finally, I think we should probably talk about uh, hard, drive, hard drive upgrades. I think those, that's probably worthwhile these days. A lot of people are going to be looking mm -hmm. at that. Yeah, now there's uh, some people think that uh, upgrading the hard drive to a newer, faster one is going to give them a really huge speed difference, really big performance differences. The performance difference is not necessarily going to be huge. Mm -hmm. You will definitely get one. Um, now, I would think from the perspective of upgrading, you'll get a lot of benefit from upgrading your hard drive, whether you get that performance benefit or not, moving from the 5400 RPM drive to the 7200 RPM drive, right. or from the old IDE to the serial ATA, you'll get more of a benefit just for having more capacity for right. storing things, because everyone's running out of space. So first of all, think about larger, 
right? So if you're running 120 mm -hmm. uh, gigabyte drive, you can go 160, go to 200, go to 250. Um, you may also want to look at the speed of the hard drive, mm -hmm. especially on laptops. A lot of the laptops are running a 5400 RPM uh, drive, and you can get a 7200 RPM, RPM drive. That's mm -hmm. especially important if you're going to be editing video. Mm -hmm. You want a faster drive. So basically, the information is going to go from the hard drive you know, and, and working in the main uh, pieces of the CPU much, much faster. One so, word of caution, though, with this yes. is that uh, when you go to a higher speed of drive, you're also going to be generating more heat. So when you go from 5400 to 7200, mm -hmm. uh, you're, it's going to be that much hotter inside the notebook case. So if it's already running really hot, you may want to rethink going to the 7200 RPM drive because in some cases, it might start melting the uh, components inside your machine. One way you can actually, of course, augment your hard drive space is by buying an external drive. I have here, uh, this is actually a, a hard drive kit that I put a, a perpendicular uh, drive technology into. It's half a terabyte in here. Mm -hmm. um, and these kits run about 120 bucks. You buy an internal hard drive and put it inside. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to connect it with either a USB connector or a firewire, depending on, you know, uh, what is available on your machine. It's a great way to add very, very f uh, lots of extra memory or storage capacity. And on the it's, system. it's nice and easy. It's very pain free for uh, people that don't want to think about getting into the system and, uh, and actually tearing one out and putting the other one in. It's also kind of painful when you replace one with another drive because then you have to copy your data over as well. So it's, it's not a whole lot of fun doing that sometimes. Right. There's also the issue inside your machine of uh, whether you have the IDE or serial ATA. You've got to make sure you get the compatible one there. So moving to IDE, at this generation, um, the speed of serial ATA isn't that much faster than uh, the old IDE drives. Now, speaking of those connectors, too, yeah. I just want to clarify one point, yeah. is that most new computers are going to come with this uh, was SATA drive, SATA, right? Yeah. right? The old technology is this IDE drive. Some yeah. motherboards will actually have two connectors or both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to have, again, look at your, your manual for your motherboard or from your system manufacturer and find out right. what the hard drive connection technologies are inside before you actually choose a hard drive to connect an internal. Mm -hmm. Anything else before we take a break? I think that's about it. Can I have some more coffee? Yeah, you absolutely can. Awesome. All right. Well, let's take a break, and when we come back, final thoughts plus uh, some uh, viewer photographs. <laughs> Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencasting software does not smell like cat pee or hide when it's bad. Is it A, Biff and Boo, B, Andy's Pillow, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. Coffee, so I'm pretty happy now. Are you happier now? Mm. A little zippier. Mm. Your hair's pointier. Absolutely. Very nice work. All right, so uh, we have uh, two of your submissions. I notice you qualify that. You didn't say photos. Photographs. No, no, no. no. I want to show, show you this. this. This is uh, there's a really great artist on the internet, a guy called Landon Norby. That's Arnold. He, he's actually a cartoonist here. Let's see if we can get it. Mm. And on the on the on the uh, right there is me, cyberized. And on the left is Amber MacArthur. Isn't that cool? That's pretty nerdy. Yeah. So that if you want to find out more cool. about that, check out uh, his, his website, zoomtechtv.wordpress.com. And he's doing all kinds of stuff. He's done, done Kevin Rose. I think he's done Leo. Mm -hmm. All the tech TV types. He hasn't done you yet, but I'm sure any day now. I think that your pointy hair would be great in a cartoon. I would think. <laughs> right. Now you have a photo for us as well? We do also have a photograph here. We have. Roberto from Brazil. Oh, I like his hair. He's got, well, he's wearing a hat. <laughs> okay, I thought it was just red hair. Um, Roberto. That, that would be awesome hair. Roberto actually wrote in to say, Andy Walker, you shut up. You quit talking so touch trash about Apple. By the way, I'm a Windows user. So there. Did he? He probably said it uh, in a different voice than that. Yes. But that's what he said. So Roberto likes both sides of the equation as well. Good, and he doesn't like when I trash Apple. He doesn't like it when you Too trash bad. Apple. Too He's bad. Too bad. He's going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. No matter what you the say. The more mail you send, the more I'm going to do it. Yes. I love it. And I'd like to say uh, to Roberto, thank you so much for sending a picture with yourself in it. Yes, thank you. And, uh, and I'd also I'm, like to tell you that I'm going to buy an iPhone soon. He's going to buy an iPhone. I am. It's true. It's like I don't hate Apple that much. Just sometimes. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. That is it. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what, what else can we plug? Hmm. Do you have anything else to plug? <sighs> Neither do you. Oh, come on. Well, go check out uh, Sean's Flickr stream. 
Yes, flickr.com slash photos slash global hermit. And uh, if you want to see uh, behind the scenes on uh, the other show I work on, Lab with Leo Deports, it's uh, flickr.com slash photos slash Lab with Leo. Very fun. All right. There we go. Well, that brings to close. I feel so dirty. <laughs> you get used to it after a while. OK. That brings to close another episode of Lab Rats. Uh, thank you for downloading this week. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Are you ready? Come on, you love it. Pluggy, pluggy, pluggy. Pause. Pause, yes. Can you just call us a bunch oh. of whores? Uh, do you want to pause these things? Yes. 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 We need to reset for the next one. That's what I thought.